What's up hobby friends, my name is Casey and welcome to another miniature rescue. Today we're going to take a look at a very interesting model and see if we can make it even better. Or completely ruin it. When Age of Sigmar first came out, the starter set included a very interesting and unique monster called the Korgorath. This model really stood out to me, partially because it was a huge monster, but also because it's had kind of a strange history on eBay. I remember when this model was in its first year and you could pick one up for pretty much under 10 bucks. I made sure to get at least two back then, just in case I needed more monster power in my starter corn army. A couple of years ago, I actually made a video about a Korgorath. A subscriber of the channel had found one in pretty good shape and went ahead and purchased it to send into the channel. I believe he paid around $20 for it. I went ahead and fixed it up as best I could and included a pretty sweet conversion in order to make the model really stand out. Today, the prices seem to fluctuate quite a bit. Most models are painted and it's become harder and harder to find these guys at a halfway decent price. You can usually find them for about 20 bucks, but shipping will be pretty high. And it seems the average is about 35 to $40 total. For a long time, I didn't realize that this model was still in print. You can still get this model from the Goreblade Start Collecting Box from Games Workshop, which is pretty much all of the models that were included in that first AOS box that Games Workshop released. What I find kind of interesting is that the sculpt is still the same. There was never a dedicated kit for this monster, but for some reason, there's a massive Forge World version. So they leave the original model as a strange monopose kit, but make a giant resin version out of him. Luckily, I happened across one of those Forge World models not too long ago, and I totally bought it. It's in pretty good shape, but there are some broken bits and construction issues that will have to be dealt with. Now I know what you're thinking, he's gonna paint that monstrosity of a model? Well, yes and no. I will be painting that big guy, but not today. So make sure you subscribe and you don't miss that. Today, I wanna take the stock monopose version of the original Korgorath and give it a bit of a facelift. If someone were inclined to own the Forge World model and say four or five of the older ones, that person may want them to look a little different from each other. After all, five monsters, even painted a little differently, should at least look different on the table. Here's some of my current Korgrath models. I've only ever played these in one actual game and they died to deadly terrain within the first 20 minutes. It was a sad day. And they've pretty much been shelved ever since. But now that I have the Forge World model, I wanted to create a corn army with these guys at the center. So the first thing we need to tackle is how to make them look different from one another. This is the model I converted a couple of years ago. Not too bad. He's got some seriously nice hair going on. He kind of evokes some old Kung Fu movies for me and he looks pretty good. Still, it's really hard to get away from that direction of the arms. Let's take a look at the hashtag Korgrath on Instagram and see what other painters and modelers have been doing with this guy more recently. Doing that might give us a good idea as to where we should take a project like this. What are the kinds of things that generally get replaced? Here's one of the first ones that pops out to me, mostly because there are three of these models, and pretty much the conversion is straightforward. It's a couple of head swaps, which I find pretty refreshing and I think is probably the most, I don't know, straightforward and doable thing, but I wanna see if there's anything more. So this is a really sweet conversion. This is basically a Korgrath, which shares a very large similarity with the Hellbrutes for 40K, and it's just being converted into that. And I think that's really cool. It actually makes the Hellbrute a really cool model, and something that I might consider in the future if I ever needed these for 40K. I think I'd rather do this than use the original models. So far, what I'm noticing is that there's a lot of just straightforward head swaps. And like I said before, I think it's because this model really needs a head swap more than anything else. The head on it just doesn't really make any sense. So, you know, it does make sense to come in with a new one and make it look pretty cool. What I'm really hoping to find, though, is something a little bit greater. And, and maybe I won't. I don't know. But uh, let's, let's keep looking and see if we can find something that stands out. This is probably the coolest conversion that I've seen from this model. I mean, it, it's weird because it actually keeps a lot of the same pieces. The head is not different. They're just additions that make this a really cool model to look at. That being said, I don't think this is exactly what I'm looking to do, but this is cool. Like, really cool. Yeah. 
this is pretty nice. I like this quite a bit. There's a little bit of difference to make it kind of that Nurgle Demon Prince, but it still fits within the kind of Age of Sigmar aesthetic, uh, even with a little 40k bit on the back. But I like this. It's it's nice. So the conclusion that I've come to is that for the most part, the community does a lot of head swaps, which I think is great for this particular model, and it does elevate it quite a bit. That being said, I want to take some of the weirder stuff from, you know, some of the, the more interesting maybe kits that I have personally and try and do something a little bit different with it. And I don't know how that's going to turn out yet, but I, I think I have a feeling it'll be all right. Let's, let's see. Now that we have a good idea of what's possible, let's sort through some bits and see what we can come up with. I took out a few of the larger bits containers that I had laying around and I picked out a few of the boxes and models that I knew had bits left in them. From there, I grabbed anything that looked like it could fit with the size of the Korgrath and set those aside. Not so surprising, I guess, is that I pulled out a ton of the new Mega Gargan bits that were left in the box after assembling one of those Gargans. I bought these particular bits off of eBay a while ago because I knew that one day there would be a perfect application for them. I think today is probably that day. Maybe. I know the scale is off a little bit, but these are monsters we're dealing with, so I think a little of the proportions differences are to be expected. I also got into the Chaos Spawn Kit, which has enough parts to build two full spawn models and leaves a ton of really great bits behind. Probably one of the more notable kits that does this, in fact. There happens to be a corn-themed head in there, and if there's anything the Korgorath needs the most, it's probably a new head. Once all the bits are on the table, it's time to start having some fun. One of my favorite things about this hobby is that you can really go nuts on conversions. Dry fitting parts together, imagining what kinds of things you can create with these new parts trying to figure out how everything is going to go together and not exactly knowing if it's going to work. Here's where the idea of taking a conversion too far can come into play. If you start to mix and match kits and add custom sculpting with green stuff and get away from the natural proportions of the model, it can start to look a little off. It might not be noticeable at first, but when it comes time to paint, several other issues can come up. Continuing to build the model, I ended up with a pretty crazy idea. Something that would be halfway between a Korgorath and what is possibly a Chaos Spawn model. One of my favorite parts of this was attaching the little humanoid arm onto the right side of the body. This really accentuated the Gargan arm and reminded me of that ridiculous character in Scary Movie with a strong hand. Beep boop, beep boop on the nose. <laughs> Anyways. I snipped away part of the Korgorath to best fit the pieces I had picked out. As long as they generally make contact and can be super glued on, we can come back in with some green stuff and begin to sculpt some extra details and bring the parts all together. For the most part, I want to fill in any large gaps, but in other areas, I really wanted to extend parts of the model to make it look like the pieces were supposed to be together. Specifically around the new creepy mouth head, there's a bunch of hair from the Gargan bits. So I'll use the green stuff and a pretty stiff sculpting tool to try and spread it out and match the texture of the hair. This takes that piece and incorporates it right into the head and body, making it look more like it belongs. As a final touch before painting, I added some chain around the body to help the back plate of mismatched armor look more like it was strapped on. That way it felt a little more grounded with the model and looked a little less like it was just magically sticking onto his back. Makes sense. Let's take a look at this monster so far prime it, and get ready for some paint. So the time has come to put color down on this model. Here's where I pretty much got really discouraged and decided that this just wasn't going to work, or at least the way I thought it was. I painted and repainted this model probably five times. I even turned off the camera and decided to just relax and try and do this, but I couldn't make it work. The model is trying to be too many things. There are several conclusions that I've come to that really push this project into more of a 
learning from your mistakes kind of week than anything else. So I thought I'd pivot that and then kind of share my results. First, simple is better. Keeping your conversion on the simple side will better sell your model as something that could actually exist. I went a little overboard with parts and pieces and ended up with a convoluted mess that was not built with painting in mind, specifically. Try to maintain scale, at least a little bit. Keeping things as close to the same scale as possible will keep your conversion from going too far into the arena of not being a plausible model from the factory. If your model is converted and still looks like it came from the factory, you're probably doing all right. Don't be afraid to shelve it. If you aren't happy with your model, just put it back on the shelf and revisit it later. It's not going anywhere, and you might come across the perfect bit or paint color to give it that life you wanted from the beginning. In my case, I really wanted to change a few things, but I just ran out of time. Sometimes that's just how it goes. So I have this project for later and a bunch of other ones. The funny thing is that you know, after the project is done, I look at this and I, I actually kind of like it. Now, it's still ridiculous and there's still things that I actually really want to change, but as an overall kind of weird thing, I think there are some things that worked out. So even though I didn't really enjoy the process of doing this, I feel like what I learned outweighed the things that went wrong, I guess. And I think in this hobby in particular, it's something you can just find and it's really beneficial. You never know what's gonna happen every time you go to do a project. I mean, I thought this was gonna be pretty straightforward, but it turned out to be kinda difficult. That's new for me, that's weird. But in the end, I got something weird. Sometimes something weird is it's pretty good. I don't know, you have to let me know what you think down in the comments about this guy. What could be done to make this a little bit better? or does it need changing at all? Let me know. Making mistakes is part of the process. Embrace it. The point is, you will end up making mistakes in this hobby, but how you handle them will determine where you go next. Take the mistakes you make and work backwards, much like I did with these conclusions. Figure out where it went wrong for you and try and work out a different solution. The models you paint and convert in the future will be all the better for it and you will probably be a better hobbyist. All in all, not exactly how I thought this was going to end up, but hey, there are a few more Korgrath to go and of course the real big Forge World model as well. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Thank you for joining me on another Miniature Rescue. If you like something about this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.